to AM Talk here on the AM Show, where we discuss some of the major issues in our country. Well, today, the NDC, no, not the NDC as in the party, but John Dramani Mahama is in court on the election petition case. The other two parties, uh, Nana Adudankwe <coughs> Kofuado and the Electoral Commission. Of course, we've got our man on the ground uh, who will be coming through uh, with what happens in the courts. There's also the issue with the leadership of parliament trying to resolve who is majority and who is minority. We've talked about the implications if we don't get this resolved. It means that really parliamentary business cannot go ahead. Who do you put on what committee who chairs it if you can figure out who is minority and majority? Forget about the fact that the standing orders define majority leader and minority leader. It looks like there is still a dot dead deadlock. Will they be able to resolve that today? Joseph Opokugapo is a man in parliament who will be filling us in. Uh, so we will talk about these two issues. And of course, we'll talk about other issues confronting us as well. My guest in studio is a new face in parliament. He's joined this eighth parliament. And I guess for uh, the last four years, he's been speaking uh, for the Ministry of Education. So he's a familiar face, but pretty new to Parliament. Echo Vincent, a Sephora's Member of Parliament now for Old Tafu. Good morning to you. Good morning. Oh Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Good to be here. Good to be here. Mm. And on your first day, um, it was quite embarrassing. So I have asked this question from members in this aid parliament when I get the opportunity to interact with them. What role did you play in all the drama we saw 6th and 7th of January? Well, let me say a very good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, I couldn't have agreed with you more when you said that uh, the first day in parliament, that is on the midnight of uh, 6th and 7th of January, uh, was quite embarrassing. Uh, I had calls to speak to some friends of mine who even termed it as dishonorable. Now, for some of us who are first timers, uh, the eagerness was there. <clears throat> we felt that uh, we, we came to the floor of parliament with some uh, amount of fresh blood, for that matter, uh, when the NDC side was uh, engaging in unruly arts and what have you, we felt that we could also stand up on our feet and. Why are you blaming also, the NDC when it was both parties in Parliament we, that we, we all saw? Watch, we all watch what transpired in Parliament. We knew where it started from. It started from when they first and foremost populated the majority side of Parliament. That was where it started from. Secondly, it also, um, they also had to make sure that the court ruling from Asin North was disregarded. These were some of the things that brought about the really out of the NDC. I mean, this is public knowledge, and all of us saw on TV. And so when the first time some of us wanted to defend our caucus, the leadership told us that the strategy of the new patriotic party was for us to remain calm and make sure that the clerk who, in the absence of the Speaker of Parliament, as per the standing orders of Parliament and the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, would have to determine as to how proceedings will have to be done. Unfortunately for us, we didn't have um, a firm clerk, a clerk who could just give judgments and the next uh, moment you also change uh, um, the ruling. Uh, because it, it beat my imagination for anybody to um, even uh, one way or the other put out that the court ruling may have to be um, followed uh, at the will of the person. And because for Christ's sake, this is a superior court of dedication. Yeah, but if that's the ruling from the leader of parliament at the time, in, in, who we, was the clerk then? We are then... lawmakers. The eighth parliament of the fourth republic of Ghana. Our core mandate is to go to parliament, uh, make laws on behalf of the good people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be seen to be flouting the same laws. Yeah, but if, if the clerk rules, the, 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 even if the, you the, think that is wrong, the, you ha still you, have to respect you read it. the last paragraph of the ruling of the court. The ruling what of what the did court the last paragraph say? Ambiguous. It said that the Asin North MP, that is Mr. James Quaison, cannot sh or should not hold himself as a member of parliament until further determinations are made as far as his case is concerned. Mm -hmm. 
So on what grounds? Because this is simple English, unless, of course, I don't understand. If you are not supposed to hold yourself as a member of parliament, and the clerk further makes a pronouncement that the House of Parliament cannot recognize him in parliament. However, Why do we have to go and read Article 105 or so and leave the person's will and say that these are the consequences thereof mm -hmm. if you want to still break the law. But the same constitution tells us that we should fight and defend the constitution so of the Republic of Ghana. So if you, anybody you wants to break to the law. So you decided to disrespect the clerk's ruling or you know, his interpretation and his call and decided to defend the constitution. Is that the justification from what we do, saw? Do, do you know that the same constitution that tells us that you have to defend and fight with your might if anybody want to as it were, disrespect the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. It's the same standing on this and constitution that tells us that there should be secret voting. Now I ask Mamaga, why can't I also be given the opportunity and my will if there are consequences thereof, if I want to breach or defy the constitution of the Republic of Ghana by not voting secretly? The consequences thereof should be for me. Are you getting my point? So you cannot approbate and reprobate at, at the same time. The, the point I'm you trying to make is that... You know what you've said is very smart, but can we, the people, do what you've said? I, I am, that I am, even though there are laws, even though there are rules, mm -hmm. we will go against them and we will face the consequences of Th those. That, that was the, the negative precedence that was set in Parliament by the NDC. But you, so, because the leader, so the, granted, leader, because the, leader of, the leader of the NDC, Harry Idrisu, said that he had, as a lawyer, he had explained the consequences thereof. So granted, the granted that they set bad precedent, but your side decided to follow. So that's what, that's what you did. But I just, I just want to understand personally, mm -hmm. as Vincent, right. what role did you play? Well, that's what I'm saying, that we have leadership. Um, even though I've been voted for by the good people of Ottawa for constituency, you enter the House of Parliament uh, uh, being part of a party that sponsored you. Because I remember uh, when I was filing with the Electoral Commission, it was the New Patriotic Party that paid for my nomination fee. That sponsored me officially. So any to. act that so, we see you so, engaging on the floor of Parliament, you're doing it in the name of the New Patriotic Party. Per, oh, per, I'm just trying to understand per, yeah, per what you're saying. The architecture of our Ghana's Parliament. We have the majority and the minority. This has been defined clearly by the standing orders of Parliament. Now, I went in there as part of the MPP caucus. The decision of the leadership, that is it. Uh, majority leader and the deputy and the chief whips, Frank and Odompre and the Habibs and Lydia, were well, that we were supposed to be seated. We were not supposed to be seated because the very first time that the MP for Ashaiman pulled Esla Ousu off her seat, I was very close, just about five meters away. So what did you I went there. I went there. What did you mm -hmm. I'm saying that I went there to make sure that calm was restored. And also one way or the other to warn the MP for Ashaiman that Whatever he's doing, we can also do the same. But it is disres uh, disrespectful for a colleague MP, a minister for that matter, for her to be pulled off her seat just on the basis that she has come to sit at a place that they think that she cannot sit. Okay, now the great. Point I'm asking, the well, point so I'm when you saw her also, and we condemn the fact that you know she, her seat was taken out of, I mean that that should never happen, not even to a absolutely, man. Absolutely, absolutely. But she also did push Collins Dowder. So what did you tell her? No, the point I'm making is that. If the MP for Ashaiman had not done that, I, didn't, I, I don't think that Esla would have done that. Because Esla had been sitting, uh, sitting with uh, Collins Dauda for close to about 30 minutes or even close to an hour. They were having friendly conversations over there. You know the personality of Collins Dauda, a very jovial uh, a man that we've all seen, having a very, very, very friendly conversation with Esla. It took the Ashaman MP to come and pull her off for her to ret retaliate in that manner. Had it not been the actions of the MP for Ashaman, we wouldn't have seen that. Mm. So, so, I so guess that is condemnable. Can I summarize from what I have been listening so far? Because we have to move on. Can yeah. I say that? Can I? Do I hear you say, oh, everything we saw happen in Parliament started with the, mi with the minority then, the NDC coming to take our seats. Therefore, Everything you saw us do, you can blame it on, on them. Absolutely. Because they took our seats. They were, they were the trigger. I mean, we saw that. Around 10 o'clock, they had already populated the place. 
we even so have they cause you club. to be in discipline to be rowdy to embarrass yourselves what was the mpp uh, in discipline there what i saw we saw the likes of was Jinapo, not NDC the likes MPP. Of, the likes of John Jinapo I initially. I saw parliamentarians. So I'm saying there are a lot of MPP. I saw parliamentarians. MPP, you can see there. The, the NDCs were wearing largely white. So you John Jinapo booting ballot You uh, see uh, NPP NDC. I tell Bukala you the truth. Bukalab also booting ballot boxes away here and there. I see our members of parliament. John Jinapo also holding a marshal and pulling a marshal off, wherever he was. The marshal, per the standing orders of parliament. Is supposed to be the chief security in parliament. So if the chief security, so, so you, you can see, I think you, you can continue to see it MPP NDC. No, but I'm not. I but guess I'm just saying that for some of us, we will see it as our members of parliament Mamaga. embarrassing Mamaga. themselves and embarrassing Mamaga. us. I've already said that what happened in parliament was embarrassing. But it is also important for us to serve notice for Ghanaians to know that who was the trigger of that embarrassing I was hoping, uh, action. I was hoping, and I'm still hoping, that individual MPs can take responsibility so that we never get to the point where we got to. And that's why I no, asked you, and that's have why you I have you seen, have you seen the parliamentary service uh, statement? Parliament as a whole regrets whatever happened. We're talking about individual parliament. So I'm saying that whatever happened there, personally, was embarrassing, especially my first time. I was not expecting to be, to, to be seeing this kind of drama. Mm. There were times that we saw oh, these videos from Uganda and Kenya and other, other people. And other now places. people are also watching us. And we were us. condemning. And Nigeria like, has welcomed This will never us. happen in Ghana, unfortunately for us. Yeah, we're not Maga, different. It has happened. We're not different. Now, now I have part of some the amount of conviction that if care is not taken, there can be a day that there can be civil war in this country. If care is not taken. Because these are things that I never thought that it could ever we're happen. We're not different, no. Yeah, we're just like in Ghana. the rest of our neighbors. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the legal issues. Uh, the uh, NDC's John Dramani Mahama uh, with this uh, petition, and we're just going to be we're going to be sharing with you by way of some graphics what he's seeking uh, for in the Supreme Court. But we know there is an initial issue that will also be dealt with uh, today. We will discover the composition uh, of the court. That's something that we do not know. Uh, so 9.30, we're told the court will sit and then we will hear the correction. I think that's the first thing that we would see the Supreme Court try to do. And then there are also some preliminary objections raised by Nanada Dankwe Kofuado and the Electoral Commission. Uh, we will have a legal practitioner help us with some of the issues. Mr. Martin Pebble will join us. Uh, we also have Mr. Nelson Dafamapo from the NDC. He's member of parliament for South Dai. He's on this conversation as well. Uh, so if we have him, can we? Can I say good morning to uh, Mr. Roxing Nelson Dafamapo? OK, we, we do not have him. He was expected to be in studio this morning, but unfortunately a bit under the weather. But he can join us via phone. Okay, so let me take you through what uh, John Dramani Mahama is uh, seeking for and some of the things you've seen already as we've been rolling uh, those visuals there. <coughs> um, essentially, the case that he's been making that the EC's declaration of Nanada Dankwe Kofwadi is unconstitutional since he did not obtain more than 50% of the vote cast. Uh, so if you follow through what John Dramani Mahama is asking for, he wants the Supreme Court uh, to declare that nobody won the election, not the first round. So there should be a second round to determine uh, the real winner of the 2020 elections. He wants the court to rule that election results as declared by the EC breached the constitution. <coughs> he wants the courts, of course, to announce the results. And that would mean uh, there isn't a president elect, and we have to go into a second round to determine that. Uh, sharing with you the election petition, the 2020 election petition. Here's uh, Nana Adedankwe Kofuado's response. Uh, petition does not disclose any attack on the validity of the election held in the almost 40,000 polling stations. Allegation of vote padding is empty and insignificant to materially affect the outcome of the election. He also says the petition does not state how many votes John Mahama should have obtained except 
pointing out that none of the candidates got more than 50% of the votes cast. Sharing the response of uh, Nana Dedankwa Ekofado, second respondent uh, in this 2020 petition. We know John Ramani Mahama has said that he will not recognize uh, the results of the 2020 presidential election. The petition is incompetent. That's uh, the Electoral Commission's response. EC admits, though, uh, uh, chairperson inadvertently read out the figure representing the total number of valid vote cast as the total number of valid votes and the percentages of Mr. Kufuad was 50.59% instead of 51.295%. Uh, and this is containing the Electoral Commission's response, allegation of vote padding untrue, the Electoral Commission says. Uh, it admits, though, that minor discrepancies may have occurred as a result of computational and mathematical errors in the cause of collation. These errors, they say, did not affect the outcome of the election as declared by the Electoral Commission. So the response from the Electoral Commission, first respondent in this case, uh, but there's, an, uh, there's a preliminary objection being raised by uh, the two parties. First, let me tell you about the Electoral Commission. Electoral Commission uh, uh, says uh, the EC is asking the court to dismiss the petition without trial. Uh, because the petition dis discloses or it fails to disclose, it has no reasonable dis uh, disclosure, a reasonable cause of action, basically saying that there's no reasonable cause of action. They want the court uh, to not even get into details of that. Uh, alleged facts sufficient to support every element of claim. So I was just trying to help with a bit of understanding in terms of uh, what they are seeking to do. But what is a preliminary objection? We will get the lawyers to help us with. Uh, and then what's the, uh, what's Nana Dodanko Ekofuado also saying? That grounds upon which petition is based do not meet requirements Im imposed on a petitioner under Article 40, uh, 64, 1 of the 1992 Constitution. The claim uh, order for announcement of the declaration of president elect instrument 2020 not supported by facts pleaded in the petition. So these two issues they are raising even before the matter itself is dealt with. They want the court to throw the case out as we say. Mr. Nelson Lafama Paul is member of parliament for Sal Dai. He joins us. Uh, he's a legal practitioner. He's an NDC member as well. A very good morning to you Mr. Lafama Paul. Me to you and good morning to your viewers. Yeah, well, I, I, I call my producer, uh, explain that you're a bit under the weather. That's why you're not able to be in the studio. We hope that yeah. you get well uh, soon. So I'm not going to push you a lot this morning. Uh, can you explain to us, you're a member of the NDC, are you part of the legal team? No, I'm not. Okay. But you can help explain uh, what your team is up to this morning at the Supreme Court. Yes, uh, simply we are saying that uh, first we want to amend uh, portions of the petition and this is something that is done in, in every civil litigation, even in criminal litigation, um, taxes are amended by prosecution all the time. And so it's not something um, strange. In civil litigation, you can amend and add more information to the pleadings that you have found. You can even amend your release. So well, the steps we are taking this morning is in order. So that's, yes. the, that's the initial one that the courts will have to deal with. Let me welcome um, Mr. Martin Pebble, who is also a lawyer. A very good morning to you, sir. Thank you also for joining the conversation. Hello, Mr. Pebble. Good morning, Mr. Pebble. Okay, we don't quite uh, have him, uh, but we'll get him to join us. So we, can, we can deal with the issue of the preliminary objection being raised. I can see you, Mr. Pebble, but I can't hear you. So if you can unmute. Okay. Okay, great. Me. All I right, sure. Thank you for joining I us. 
Uh, Mr. Martin Thank Pribble. you. Okay, good. I wanted you to help us with the preliminary objection being raised by the two respondents, uh, the Electoral Commission and Nanado Dankwe Kofad. What does it mean? Okay, so in law, what they are basically saying is that the court should not spend time going through the whole case with the I put it to you, you see the 2012 petition, <laughs> Dr. Baumia was in the box, he brought his pink sheets, the PowerPoints, all those things. You see the nine months we spent. Uh -huh. What the objections are seeking to say is that we shouldn't, this time is uh, 40, so let's say seven days for the trial and harm. Huh. So this time, what the Nana uh, Kufuadu uh, and EC are saying is that instead of spending seven days for the trial, the court should not do that. The court should just look at the case, and then, of course, the lawyers will give legal authorities and throw it out, you see? So that's the preliminary matter. Mm. If the court doesn't grant it, what it means is that the court will subsequently give opportunity for Mr. Mahama to enter the box and talk and give his evidence. You see, so far this time, uh, uh, Mr. Mahama didn't present his pin sheets. Am I right? You mm -hmm. said that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So he wants to enter the box, or even if not he himself, maybe the director of elections, Mr. Elvis Free Ankara, or maybe a doing Kitty, or any other person. He can give uh, other people. Or even if he himself <coughs> talks, he says he'll call five witnesses. Yes, I remember that mm -hmm. from the petition. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, uh, the effect of the preliminary objection is that they don't want Mr. Mahama to come and enter the box and talk and call all his witnesses. They just want the court to look at the papers filed so far and listen to the lawyers talk about some law and then throw out the case, saying that it is not a good case. It doesn't pass master. Okay. No. Now, now, Mama B, um, I agree with uh, Martin to the extent that they are asking the court to dismiss the case. In fact, what they are saying further is that our case has no merit at all. So they are not even saying that the court should even listen to the lawyer, that the court should come to a decision that the case, the case is not supposed to even come to court. When mm -hmm. somebody says, your case does not disclose the reasonable cause of action. Mm -hmm. It means you have no business coming to court. But that is very strange, considering the fact that in their own answer, in their own answer to in the in the answer of the president as well as the electoral commission, they agree. For instance, the president agrees that there were some vote parties, but it is de minimis, de minimis in the sense that it is inconsequential the number of votes that we claim were padded to his vote, were, were inconsequential, were immaterial. And for me, if anybody agrees that there, was, there were figures added to my, there were, there were votes added to my vote, which I am not entitled to obtain, that is fraud. You agree that something until what has happened. So to that extent alone, the matter ought to have been gone on, or gone into on its merit. So mm. that's, that's my first point. Okay. My second point. The Electoral Commission itself, the allegation we are making against the Electoral Commission, they also have come to court to admit that, yes, there were mathematical errors. But they are also alleging that those mathematical errors were such that they were inconsequential. That is, they were such that they were not material, they did not affect the final vote. So, again, once you come to court to admit to the allegations I am making against you, I am properly anchored. I, I, my matter, I have, I have properly invoked the jurisdiction of the court. Mm, okay. And my case discloses reasonable cause of action. Okay. So I hear you defend and make a case uh, for Mr. Mahama that he indeed has a case. Uh, I'll, indeed, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll come to not, Vincent. Not just, the, a case, mm. not just a case, but a very, very strong case. Okay, we'll see. We'll hear from the Supreme Court later this morning. So we, I guess we will all figure that out. I'll come to Vincent in a little bit. But I want to ask you, Mr. Martin Pebble, 
We know that there's also a pre-trial, pre-hearing. At what point does that come in? Hello, Mr. Pebble. Hello, yeah, I'm Ravi. Yes, sir. I yeah, was... Please, can you repeat? I, I think was... that mm -hmm. it's I... a bit low. The voice, I don't know where that is coming from me. Okay, great. I'll try again. I was, I was yeah, asking please. that, I was asking about the pre-trial. Uh, at what point does that come in? So, the pre-trial? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, after the uh, determination of Mr. Mohammed's application to correct the errors. You see, this morning they have two two items on the uh, let's call it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So that let's use other terms that will make it friendly to understand. So the first one is that Mr. Mahama wants the corrections <coughs> made. You know the, the the typos that were made in the petition. So the court will hear that and finish it. Then the next thing the court will deal with is the pre-trial. It has to be dealt with today because the law says that it should be done uh, at least before the 15th day. You know, uh, can I proceed to put it in context? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So you know, when the petition, uh, petition was filed on the 30th, the time did not start running until it was served the next day. So the law says that once uh, President Kufuado and the EC are served, they have 10 days to answer. So the 42 days started running from the 31st of December when the petitions were served. So the law says after the 10 days, that is to say after the president and the EC have filed their responses, the next thing is for the court to go on with pre-trial. Okay. And the court to go on with pre-trial. Mm -hmm. So that's what... Okay. okay. I'll come to Vincent and then I'll come back to you so that you explain what goes into that pre-trial because that's not the point where if the Supreme Court decides, that's not the point where we will probably see it on television play out. Uh, but Vincent, what's your understanding of what is playing out, what is beginning today? Uh, well, this is typical of uh, Martin Pibu. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he was my criminal law and uh, taught law lecturer from the Central University. Good for you. He, he, will, he will bring the law to the barest minimum for, mm -hmm. for you to understand. And, uh, but um, the question I ask is, the NDC went to court on the basis that there should be a rerun. John Mahama. John Mahama. Now I ask, what are the numbers that the NDC had? And what are the numbers that the MPP had? Per John Dramani Mahama, who is the first, uh, who is the petitioner in court. In the absence of those numbers, I can only agree that the petition that has been sent to court by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is incompetent is frivolous and vexatious. I'm saying this because you are going to court to, as it were, seek for a review of what the Electoral Commission declared on the 9th of de December. The Electoral Commission declared that the NPP had about 51.295. Initially, they said 51.595. And that is where, in the petitioner's uh, reliefs, it sought to indicate that there were some errors that were made by the, uh, the Electoral Commission. Now, after they saying on the 8th and 9th of December that they have won the election by well over 51 or 50 point something percent. Now, at the material time that it matters most, in the Supreme Court that you've tendered in your petition, Mr. John Dramani Mahama failed to let the people of Ghana know, or if like the court know, that they were able to garner this number of votes. The MPP also garnered this number of votes. And for that matter, it warrants a rerun. For all the 35 reliefs of the NDC, you cannot see that in there. Now, 
if you also check the numbers that they also put out as far as, far as their uh, petition is concerned, Mr. Tafiamopo uh, <coughs> mentioned that the figure that the NDC was able to, as it were, allude some material facts to amounts to 6,225 or so. Now, in law, they call that de minimis. It is irrelevant. It is not substantial. It cannot outturn the over 500,000 votes that His Excellency Nana Adudam Kwekufuadu used to beat His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. That figure is not enough to overturn the results, or it cannot even warrant the rerun as being sought by the NDC, or if you like Mr. John Dramani Mahama, in the Supreme Court. And so <clears throat> it is very difficult as to um, how this uh, relief is going to be uh, if you like, approved by the Supreme Court. And that is why the hmm. preliminary objection by the uh, lawyers of His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufado is indicating that on the basis of the facts, or if like the allegations that have been made by the petitioner, that is His Excellency John Dramani Muhammad, this issue is a waste of time. Hmm. It is going to waste the precious time of the Supreme Court. And for that matter, trials should not even be um, granted to uh, the first petitioner. And I think that as a party, the MPP party, we also agree to the points that have been raised by the uh, lawyers of His Excellency Nanado Dan Kufado. Uh, with the distinction between what declaration of results and validity of results is. In 2012, you remember, or if like 2013, all of us became aware that the elections were won at the polling station. Over 30,000 polling stations across the country that we voted, that after voting, counting is done in front of the agents of the various parties. And then results are pasted for everybody to know at the polling station. In all the 35 release of the NDC, of like John Dramani Mahama, there wasn't any, any, not even a single, or if you, let me say, not even one mm. of okay. their allegations or their reliefs to ask it were our 10 any of these polling stations, including the over 301 special voting centers that we had before the December 7th. Okay, so, so that famous... So it is very frivolous. That, and this case will not see the light of day. All right, we wait to see the famous pronouncements during the 2013 election petition uh, coming back, the fact that elections are won uh, at the polling stations. We'll see how this one plays out. But Mr. Mr. Pebu, you're still with me. Uh, I know that you won't talk about the yes. substance of this case, but can you explain with your experience, I'll come to what goes into uh, the pre-trial, but can you explain in terms of the composition of this court? We are yet to see uh, how this will be done in terms of who will be uh, on this case. But Hello. with the experience Hello. that you have, Mr. Pebble, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I hear you. Okay. So I wanted you to share yes, a bit of experience on, on that leg. Uh, you said who will be on the panel? No, I'm uh, not what? asking who will be, but usually what happens at this crucial period in terms of the formation of the panel? Okay. Yeah, so this particular one, um, looking at the context of this case, because it is a second... Uh, petition since the, I mean, uh, uh, in the Fourth Republic, and since the first one was in 2013, you would expect that by all means, the chief justice will seek to take uh, and panel some of the judges who were on the previous one so that there will be some experience coming from the first one. Because, you know, in terms like this, sometimes you hear they'll tell you don't change a winning team. Okay, <laughs> but we also know that quite a number of the judges who were on that uh, previous panel have retired. So <laughs> naturally, we can't have the same panel. But by all means, some from that old panel will be in panel. That is to say, they will be put on this case uh, mm -hmm. to hear this case. That's one. Then, uh, if you look at the judges, some lawyers have opined. Okay, that. You know, the judges usually come from two streams. There are those who are 
who start their careers soon after law school as judges. And then there are those who practice for a long time before becoming judges. So some lawyers expect that there will be some judges from who were made Supreme Court justices straight from the bar should also be allowed to sit on it. Am I are you with me? I am. It's interesting. We're listening. Bring the Lord down for us to understand. So that they want a mix. So what they are saying is that, okay, so let's say something like, somebody like Justice uh, Kulendi, he mm -hmm. was at the bar and then straight away, I mean, when I say straight away, not one day, of course, well over 20 years, about uh, over 25 uh, before he was <laughs> taken to the Supreme Court. So people are expecting that those who came straight from the bar as private practice should also be put on. So if you use that criteria, then in that case, you have Justice Amegashi and then Justice uh, Kulendi and then Justice Scott Kwama. Uh -huh. These are the There's ones also that Herita, I really remember who came also. from the bar straight mm -hmm. away in recent times. Mm -hmm. So they, so uh, out of these three, one of them should be on it. That's Justice Scott Kwama. He's senior amongst those people from the bar. Then the next is Justice Amegashi. Then uh, there's Nene Amegashi. Then the third one is Justice uh, Yoni Kulendi. Okay, so but where, where would Henry Ta, them, when Mr. Pebu, when, where would Henry Tamensa Bonsu uh, fall? Excellent. Uh -huh. Thank you. As I said, you know, just <laughs> take it on my feet. So you, you have it right. Thank you for adding. So Professor Amensa Bonsu is also one of those. So she's also in that uh, category. So out of these four, at least one of them should be uh, added. Then the third criteria, and these opinions I'm sharing, we should give credit to uh, Denise J. Juma. Okay. He did an article on that. The third criteria is that uh, our mothers should be properly represented. So <laughs> women on the panel. Of course, it's a given. Ghana, we've always shown that there is diversity. Okay, but I've said at least they need to put the article together. So naturally, we expect that out of the women judges, some will be on the uh, panel. Of course, some people will sit and say, oh, this is no brainer because Ghana, we have shown quite a solid track record, especially when it comes to the Supreme Court. We've appointed two uh, chief justices who are women in quick succession. Uh -huh. So it's not unusual to expect that this panel will have some uh, some of our mothers on the uh, on it. Okay, so that's the, the the those who have practiced for quite a bit before they got here. Uh, you've shared the women yeah. angle. What's the third? The third, uh, and that's where I started from. The experience. Those who were on the 2012 petition. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. So okay. that's some experience from the last petition. Okay. Great. Uh, one last question, but let me go to um, uh, let me let me go to the member of parliament for Saldai, Mr. Roxon Nelson Dapamapa. I know that you want to react to something that Vincent said, uh, but also, do you have any thoughts on the composition of the panel? Yes. Uh, first of all, Vincent knows that when a preliminary a point of preliminary legal objection is raised and is to be taken, you don't lead evidence. Pure, strictly a matter of law. He was new law. So for him to admit to the fact that, yes, uh, the, 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 the respondents have admitted to certain allegations in the petition, but it is the minimum, is a matter that cannot be taken at the preliminary stage of the matter. It, it has to be gone into on its merit. So that's my first point. My second point is that. Yes, in terms of the composition of, of the, the anticipated composition of, of the panel for, for the hearing of this matter, um, whatever criteria we put up may be, may be inconsequential. The final decision lies with the, with the chief justice. He has the power. <laughs> but like, like Martin said, um, deriving from the article put out by Dennis uh, Adejimo, if you look at if you look at the stock directly from the bar, there are also another another branch. That is, there are two two of the justices who came from academia. That is Justice Mensah Bosu and uh, Professor Ashikote. 
Mm. They were in academia. They also came onto the bench right from academia. They, 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 they may not have been into private practice, but they were strictly into academia. So that talk is also very important in empaneling the, the justices for the hearing of this matter. So mm. for me, between Ashikote and Herita Mensah, one of them should also be represented. Okay. And, there's, and the issue about gender, for me, doesn't arise at all. There's no way you can panel <laughs> the justice to hear this matter without a woman or without a man. You will simply not get the nothing. Mm. So, so for me, there's no way we can empanel without without the men and without the women. Okay. So as a matter of the numbers, we surely have a blend. But what is important is the criteria that uh, Martin Martin mentioned. There's three from three directly from Francis, uh, Justice Amagache, Yoni Kolendi, uh, and of course Scott Poamai. Um, one or two of them should be there. I agree. But from academia to between uh, between Professor Shikuti, my own professor, and Mensabi, also my own professor. One of them, or or both of them, should be there because. I'm sure this panel will be a very large panel. I'm sure it will be about a nice, a full panel. I think from, from, from the last experience, it was a full panel. And the full panel at the Supreme Court is nice. So there will be a place for everyone, every shade of opinion mm. on, on, on the bench. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pebble, do you also expect a full panel? Another leg of the question, uh, is this one of those events where you can have the petitioner say, object to some... Uh, members sitting on the panel? Oh, yes. As for the objection, the law allows it, as you well know yourself, Mamavi. If any of the parties has grounds to uh, prove bias, he can raise it and uh, it will be heard. That's one thing. And as for expecting a full panel to, yes, it's a given. Considering that this is a very Oh, unfortunately, that uh, connection uh, has, is frozen, really. Uh, but Mr. Pebble will definitely reconnect with us. I have some news to share, though. Uh, we're told that the request for live telecast has been granted. GTV will make the feed available. So that request has been granted. Uh, just fresh information that I'm sharing, uh, because we know that one of the things that John Dramani Mahama was asking for was a live telecast of the procedures. We will try and get a lot more information in terms of does it begin today? We would, would we see uh, what is in court live today? Echo, uh, my producer, please work on that for me so I can share that as well. Mr. Pebble, do we have you back? Mr. Pebble, can you hear me? Okay, we, we do not have him. Uh, but so, uh, Mr. Dafamakwa, you've talked about Vincent. Let me get your thought on the on the composition, uh, the interesting analysis. I, I saw you writing a few things. <laughs> what do you make of well, what well, is uh, now? The the germane issue that will have to be considered is not necessarily about the composition of the judges. Uh, be that as it may, I would be interested among the three that have been agreed. Or let me say four. I would be um, interested to see Yunikulindi. Um, give a judgment as to um, how the petitioner and the respondent uh, put in their <coughs> uh, facts before the court and the kind of reasoning and case law that will be adduced by uh, Yoni Kulindi. Because I, I really love to listen to him. Mm. I've read a few articles of, from, here, from him. As for Henry Tamensa Bonsu, I've always been reading her book, so I've had enough of her already. But I would want to <coughs> um, listen to uh, Yoni Kulindi as to his thoughts about the petition and the uh, respondent's case. Uh, be that as it may, the most important thing is the case of the petition and the response on the part of the second respondent. I am saying this because whether you put Judge A or Judge B, it is the facts that will speak for you. The facts and the evidences that you adduce in court is what is going to give you the reliefs sought or it is going to quash the reliefs. And so I'm looking forward to um, an interesting debate if mm -hmm. um, the court so allows that the trial should um, uh, be allowed to uh, proceed in, in, in the Supreme Court. But I'm hoping that the preliminary objection uh, may not even allow us to go through all this 
uh, uh, processes. <laughs> but I mean, experience is also very important, as Lawyer Pebu said, uh, especially because 2013, that was a maiden petition, uh, I feel like election petition that you've seen since 1992. And around that time, you remember, the number of um, applicants in their various law faculties started doubling and tripling. And because every Ghanaian uh, now had the opportunity to appreciate basic law, had to appreciate what was happening in our courts, because there are some of our people who had never even stepped foot in our courts before. And so the experience is also very important, how our judges were able to uh, manage the situations at that mm -hmm. time. And I'm sure that they would be able to, to give some amount of uh, wise um, counseling to the new ones who will be on the panel, so as, so, so as to be able to guide them to make sure that there, there, mm. there is a fair hearing um, in court. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lafamapo, there's another legal mind that's just reminding me that we're in COVID times, so we probably should expect seven on the panel and not a full nine. Has that crossed your mind? No. I, I, yes, I agree that we are in COVID times. That doesn't mean that the, 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 the panel cannot be a full panel. Because from, from, from precedent, the 2013 petition, or 2012 petition, which started in 2013, was led by a full panel. It was a full panel of nine. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to appreciate the fact that because we have COVID, it should be seven. Mm. I, it, it's a good point to make, but uh, for me, uh, it doesn't mean the court cannot function the way it ought to. Mm. So, uh, you, you are... there's, there's no here. Indeed, as I speak, um, you recall that uh, uh, Tatsuchikata was in court about a week ago on, on the whole matter, in mm -hmm. spite of the uh, special that the AG was. Hello? Yes. Yes, and he filed for a review. And the review is the full panel. So, how would the court handle that? It's, it's so. It doesn't mean we are in COVID, but it doesn't mean the court should not function the way. Mm. They will take they will take the necessary protocols into consideration. That works, and I think that that's what they will take this matter. So I expect a full fun. Okay, let me okay. get your let me get your thought. You're closer to uh, the petitioners team than we are. So, uh, what more have you heard on the news that's just coming that the court has granted? Uh, the live telecast to happen. Uh, and I call my producer, it, kindly call our court correspondent it, for it, us. It, so indeed, we can get indeed, more. Mm -hmm. indeed, Mama, this tend to agree that the, the election EI, EI um, 99, I think so, permit, permit the, 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 the airing of the proceeding if the court will permit. And in fact, the new election manual. Uh, Produced by the eminent committee put together by the chief justice. They also alluded to the fact that once they permit, they permit the, the live telecast of the proceedings, that will be done. But you see, we wanted to, to that is ex abundance hotel, for the avoidance of doubt. You know, we, we wanted to be very careful, we wanted to be sure of what we were doing. So even though we know that the law, the law permits it, we want to be sure. So that's why we brought the application. Oh, but the law permits it, but it's good that you request for it so that there can be a decision as, because exactly, it's up to them as, to decide. As, no, no, you see, if, if you don't take steps to assess that right, and the, because the law says the court of me. Mm -hmm. So if you don't assess that right formally, and the court says no, in this case, we will not allow, we will not allow life telecast. And you are done. So what, what, in terms of, would we see procedures today live is, is one of the things I'm trying to clarify here. Uh, Do you know? The, 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 grant, the grant of the assets, my understanding is that even GBC, GTV had set up as of yesterday. GTV was setting up in the courtroom. Okay, so we might... As of, as of yesterday. Okay. Even when we were filing our application, I, I think that some back, backroom, backroom or... Backroom negotiations have already taken place. So GTV had already been granted access to 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 set up okay. and, and broadcast the proceedings live. Okay. So we the grant of the application this morning, I'm sure it's, it's a mere it's a mere formality. It's a mere formality. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so but but as to 
as to the, the case management conference, you know at the high court level where that is very prevalent, it mm -hmm. is done in chamber. So mm -hmm. that when the parties put their house is not that the exhibits are properly marked and every other document is regularized. Then we come back to open court to begin trial. So I don't know what formula the Supreme Court will adopt, whether the, the, the case management conference will take place in chambers for, for the parties to put their house in order, mark all the exhibits properly, mm. and set everything in order before we come back to open court, to open trial. Okay, great. Yeah. Let me just cross over to Mr. Martin Pebble. Uh, what he, he calls the case management conference, I guess, for ordinary persons such as myself, we understand it to be the pre trial, the pre-hearing that I wanted you to explain what goes into it. Uh, but let me yes. ask of your thoughts for this live telecast uh, that our court correspondent tells us has been granted, that request has been granted, so we'll see that play out live on television. My question is, would it start today? <laughs> well, are we no longer answering the pre-trial? <laughs> no, it's linked. So if, 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 if it would start today, then would we see the pre-trial also play out on live television? Exactly. That's why it should be expected. Because, sorry, that's why it should be expected. Because as part of the pre-trial, as uh, uh, Roxon has uh, referred to, they are going to put all the evidence together and arrange, mark them. But the only point of departure I have with him is that it's not going to be in chambers. It's not mandatory that every judge conducts trial in chambers. They have a discretion. Some do it in chambers, others do it in open court. Considering the nature of this uh, high profile case, there's a zero percent chance of uh, it being done in chambers. The numbers are already too many. I don't see any uh, chambers that will be big enough to accommodate all these uh, judges and uh, lawyers and everything. If they are observing the pre-trial, uh, if they are observing the COVID protocols, so chances are very high for uh, an open court. Uh, pre-trial okay and then so can we explain a bit about the pre-trial please do so like we're saying yeah so in the pre-trial is basically to make sure that all the logistics uh -huh, are guarded and are ready for the trial to commence so <laughs> uh, take for instance i was mentioning elsewhere that if mr mahama wants to speak gunja that's his native tongue right Mm -hmm. uh, he will inform the court, that's through his lawyers, that he wants to speak Gunja. So they will have to arrange for a Gunja interpreter, okay, for the day that Mr. Mama will mount the box. If there are other persons in the uh, witness, the other witnesses will call. If some will speak, take all the Ghanaian languages. Then it means they have to arrange for all those witnesses. Then apart from that also, uh, there is going to be the uh, PowerPoints using computers. Maybe you want to demonstrate something on the computer. All those will inform the court. Or take another uh, instance. If somebody is out of the jurisdiction and he wants to give evidence by video link, now we allow evidence to be given by video link. So they will inform the court so that the necessary processes and other things will be done so that on the day, the person, if he's in Togo, he's in Burkina Faso or wherever, he can give his evidence by video link, just like we are doing by Zoom today, mm. you see. So those are all the things that will be done. And also very crucially, Maravi, the court, as part of the pre-trial, will try to indicate to the, well, for lack of, will try to indicate it's not the best expression, but let's say, will give the uh, lawyers a fair sense of the time that will be allotted for cross-examination. So pre-trial is a critical time management tool or process. Remember that in this petition, the trial is going to last for seven days. 
Of course, if the judges think there are some critical matters that are said that the judges want to give a part of their days, you know, under the rules, the judges have 21 days to give the judgment. Mm -hmm. So maybe if they want to yield some time to the lawyers, fine. But what I'm saying is that at the starting point, the trial is scheduled to take seven days. So the judges will be giving the lawyers an indication of how much time they will allow for cross-examination. This matter is very important because usually when we go to trial, depending on who the lawyer is, the cross-examination can take a lot of time. I'm sure you can remember from the 2012 petition mm -hmm. that you and I were not there and all those things. So this time, it will be cut down drastically. So all these things will be discussed at a pre-trial so that the lawyers can come prepared. So okay. then they will say, look, uh, Mr. Mama intends to call five witnesses. When they finish going through, they will say, look, we don't think all the five will be necessary. We will take three witnesses. Then they say, Kufuado, maybe we will take, I don't know, uh, one number, but they can cut it down. Then they will tell the lawyers, we'll give you maybe four hours for cross-examination of the first witness, three hours for the next witness, and so on and so forth. So all those things will be discussed and agreed upon and put at the pre-trial. Okay. All right. Mr. Pebble, I thank you very much for the education and the insights, uh, your thoughts that you bring uh, onto this very important petition. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Martin Pebble. Mr. Dafamakor, I want to say thank you to you as well. Speedy recovery. Hopefully we can have a live conversation when you get better. Yeah. Thank you very much. My okay. pleasure. Okay, great. Uh, Vincent, you're here. I'll give you the last say. Uh, but yes, so the last say on this one, just wrap up for me. Well, uh, let me say that uh, it is not new to have uh, the court proceedings to be telecasted. Uh, in 2013, as I've already indicated, the people of Ghana had the opportunity to see how, for the first time, an election petition uh, was heard in court. And so uh, we are eager to see uh, this for the second time, especially because this time around we may not have to go through that length of about nine months. This time just about 30 days or 34 days because we are already done with about 10 days. And so what it means is that uh, we are anxious to see uh, what is going to happen in court. I am just hoping that uh, just at the preliminary stages, uh, this case will be uh, thrown out so that His Excellency the President and Nara Danko Kufado would have um, his peace of mind to be able to rule uh, the nation. Tomorrow, on the 15th of January, uh, Parliament is also uh, reconvening. And uh, as I've already indicated, the MPP is mathematically the majority on its side. There cannot be any. I thought you wait for the speaker to, sense. or you wait for today's meeting. It, it is with very, leadership. It is very, very difficult for me to understand, or if you like, for me to foresee how there can be any mischief or purposive interpretation to the laws of this country. Any purposive interpretation that seek to tell me that one plus one is no more two. It is going to be very difficult for me to see how okay. it's going to play out. I, I guess we'll figure I, that I, out. Uh, I, I, I hope that the Speaker of Parliament, Mr. Aban Babin, after his 28 years of his experience in Parliament, will do what is right. I know he's, he's, he's a doyen as far as the standing orders of Parliament is concerned. Well, we wait to hear the outcome of that meeting as well. But Vincent, listen, I wish you the very best right. in this eight Parliament. Right. Thank uh, you so much. Go and carry the dreams of uh, the people of Old Tafford. Never forget the other reason you're there. Thank you so much. All right.